Hi all, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn about additive ciphers. So let's get started. Additive ciphers is the simplest monoalphabetic ciphers. And why is it the simplest? Well, you will know about that once we understand its working. So let's define it mathematically. So in an additive cipher, the plain text can take the values from 0 to 25, where 0 represents lowercase alphabet A, 1 represents lowercase alphabet B, and so on till 25 represents lowercase alphabet Z. From the previous video, we know that such a range of values is represented by Z26. The cipher text also has the same range, that is 0 to 25, represented by Z26. Here 0 represents uppercase alphabet A, 1 represents uppercase alphabet B, and so on till 25 that represents uppercase alphabet Z. Here the key K also has the same range as P and C, that is from 0 to 25. Having defined this, let's look at the encryption and decryption algorithms. So here the encryption algorithm formula is ek is equal to p plus k mod 26. And the decryption algorithm for additive cipher is dk equal to c minus k mod 26. So we can see that while encrypting, we are shifting the alphabets forward and while decrypting, we are shifting the alphabets backwards. Hence, it is also called as shift cipher. This was the mathematical definition of additive or shift cipher. Now, let's have a look at its diagrammatic representation. As we have seen in the symmetric key cryptosystem video, this is the general diagram for symmetric key cryptosystem. If you haven't seen that video, I would recommend you to see that first because we have defined all the notations that we have seen in the previous slide and also this diagram is explained in detail in that video. Refer the i button for its link. So coming back to our diagram, we'll define the encryption and decryption algorithm for our additive or shift cipher. So from the previous slide, we know that the encryption algorithm for the additive cipher is ek equal to p plus k mod 6, while the decryption algorithm is dk equal to c minus k mod 26. So this was the diagrammatic representation of the additive cipher. Now let's go to a special case of additive cipher, that is Caesar cipher. Here the key is equal to 3. Let's have a look at the definition. So your p has the same range as the additive cipher, c also has the same range. However, the key is always 3. So the encryption algorithm for this cipher is ek equal to p plus 3 mod 26 and the decryption algorithm is dk equal to c minus 3 mod 26. Let's have a look at the diagrammatic representation of Caesar cipher. So here the encryption algorithm is ek equal to p plus 3 mod 26 and the decryption algorithm is dk equal to c minus 3 mod 26. Now let's have a look at some examples to understand both these ciphers better. So the first example is encrypt the message hello there using additive or shift cipher with key 20. So here the plain text p is hello there, key k is equal to 20 and encryption algorithm is c equal to p plus k mod 26. First let's map all the English alphabets to a corresponding number. So here the alphabet a is mapped to the number 0, b mapped to 1 and so on till z mapped to the number 25. We will construct a table to solve this problem. The first row is the plain text P. So here we have a column for each letter in the plain text. Also you can observe we have ignored the space between the two words. This is because we always join all the plain text and then calculate the cipher text. So the next thing that we do is find the value of P that is the numerical value of P. Referring to the mapping, we can see that the letter H is mapped to the number 7. So we input 7. The letter E is mapped to the number 4, so we input 4, and so on we input all other numbers by referring to the mapping table. The next row is P plus K. So we add the value of K that is 20 to each number in the first row. So 7 plus 20 is 27, 4 plus 20 is 24, and so on we calculate all other values. The next row is P plus K mod 26. So let's apply the modulus operator. So in the previous video we have seen how to calculate the modulus using the scientific calculator. But since here the number are easy, we'll just use their old techniques to calculate the modulus. A simple trick that we can use in additive cipher is, if the number is greater than 26, then we just subtract 26 from the given number. So here the first number is 27, which is greater than 26. So we subtract 26 from it and we get 1. The second is 24, since it is less than 26, we will have only 24 here. Then we have 31, we subtract 26 and we get 5. And we apply the same logic for all other numbers and calculate this row. 
and the last row is the ciphertext C. So we again refer to this mapping and now we go from right to left that is we see the number and correspondingly we get the alphabet. So for the number 1 we have B so we input B. For number 24 we have Y so we input Y. For number 5 we have F so we input F and similarly we get all other alphabets. And finally we get our ciphertext that is the following. So we have successfully encrypted the message hello there using the key 20 and the algorithm as additive cipher. Let's look at another example. Here the example is encrypt the message cryptography using Caesar cipher. So here the plain text P is cryptography. Since this is a Caesar cipher, K is always 3, so K equal to 3. And the encryption algorithm is C equal to P plus 3 mod 26. Let's again refer to the mapping of alphabets to the corresponding number values and calculate a table. So first row is the P. So we have cryptography here. The next row is value of P. Referring to the mapping table, we get the corresponding numbers. So the next operation is P plus 3. That is we add the key to the plain text. So these are the values. So 2 plus 3 gives us 5. 17 plus 3 gives us 20. And similarly, using the same logic, we have inputted all other numbers. The next operation is p plus 3 mod 26. So here 5 mod 26 is 5. Since it is less than 26, 20 mod 26 is again 20. 27, which is greater than 26, we subtract 26 from here, so we get 1. And applying the same logic, we calculate all other values. And finally, referring to the mapping table, we calculate the corresponding ciphertext. So here the ciphertext is the following. So these were the examples where we have encrypted the plain text. Let's have a look at the example where we decrypt the ciphertext. So the next example is decrypt the following message using the shift cipher with key as 15. So here the ciphertext C is WTAAD, key is equal to 15 and the decryption algorithm is P equal to C minus K mod 26. Let's call a mapping table back for a reference and calculate the table values. So here the first row is the ciphertext. So we input each and every alphabet of the ciphertext. So the next operation is the numerical value of C. So referring to the mapping table, we get the corresponding numerical values. The next operation is C minus K. That is, we subtract the key K from each alphabet in the ciphertext. So here 22 minus 15 gives us 7, 19 minus 15 gives us 4, and similarly we calculate all other values. The next operation is C minus K mod 26. So here 7 mod 26 is 7, 4 mod 26 is 4. And the second trick here that we can use is when the numbers are negative, we just add 26 rather than subtracting 26. So minus 15 plus 26 gives 11. Here also we get the 11 since it is minus 15. And here minus 12 plus 26 gives us 14. And finally, we find the plain text by using the mapping table and we have obtained the plain text that is hello. So here the plain text is hello. So this was the example where we have decrypted a cipher text using shift cipher. Now let's look into the crypt analysis of additive cipher. So in simple language, we will find what are the loopholes or disadvantages of this cipher. The additive cipher is vulnerable to ciphertext only attack using the techniques of brute force and statistical attacks. We have covered the ciphertext only attack in the previous videos. Do watch it if you haven't, link in the i button. So let's look how the brute force attack is used to break this cipher. So in this case, it is easy to decrypt using brute force attack because there are only 26 values possible for the key k, that is from 0 to 25. So the attacker can start with k equal to 0, then go to 1, 2, till he gets a sensible plain text. And since the size of the domain of the key is so small, that is 25, it is pretty easy to crack it. The next attack is statistical attack. Statistical attack is used when ciphertext is long enough. Here the attacker uses a frequency of occurrence of a character in the English language. So we have learned in the cryptanalytic attacks video that in a statistical attack, the attacker uses the inherent characteristics of the plain text language. And here, since the plain text language is English, we know that the letter E is the most frequently used alphabet in the English language. So the attacker will calculate the frequency of every letter in the ciphertext and then assign the letter E to the most frequently appearing letter. Since one mapping of the ciphertext to plain text is known, he will apply the same mapping to the other alphabets and eventually will get the plain text. That's the reason additive cipher is the simplest and the most vulnerable encrypting technique since it is easy to decrypt the ciphertext. With this, we have completed the additive cipher.
In the next videos, we will cover the further mono alphabetic cipher. So that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching the video, and if you have any doubt, please do let us know in the comment section below. And if you have found the video helpful, then do like and share the video with your friends and subscribe to be the best channel for more such videos. Meet you in the next video of the CSE series. Bye bye.